So this week we are talking about a new film, The Way, My Way. Uh, it's based on Bill Bennett's best-selling Camino book of the same title. Uh, it's about a guy who walks 800 kilometers on the Camino de Santiago. He's searching for meaning, not realizing, of course, that it's right in front of him all of the time. And who best to tell us all about that movie than Bill Bennett himself coming right up. Okay, so welcome, Bill. It's so fantastic to talk to you. And uh, I was lucky enough to see the premiere, the global premiere last week and, and to meet you there. Um, Bill, you're the writer and director of this movie. You've been writing and directing movies for 40 years, I know. Um, I saw the movie last week. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It was so authentic. Um, of course, everybody wants to know when they can see it and where they can see it. So we'll make sure we come to that. But if we could start off with a bit of background. So the, the film is based on the book. The book is based on your first Camino in 2013, was it? 2013, yeah. Yeah, 2013. Why the book and then why a film? <laughs> well, to explain, I never intended to write a book uh, and, and I never intended to make a movie. So all, all of this is, to be quite frank, quite surreal. Uh, how it happened was this. I... I walked the I walked the Frances in 2013, starting in St John Peter Paul and going right the way through. I had enormous problems with my knee. I was writing a blog each day, principally initially for family and friends. When I I really Rob, I really didn't know why I was so compelled to walk the Camino, and I kept on asking myself that question each day. And I would ask other pilgrims as well that I met along the way. I got to Santiago and. I was expecting an epiphany, and the epiphany never came. I was expecting a like a, a thunderbolt from heaven, or little angels, you know, coming coming down and fluttering around me, whispering in my ear, "Bill, this is the reason you've done the Camino." <laughs> None of that happened. That's what we all look for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, so I came back to Australia and thought maybe if I write a book, then it will reveal itself in the writing of the book. And so that's why the book was written. Having having written the book, and the book surprisingly became um, very popular very quickly, I, um, I was contacted by a movie distributor, um, very, a very veteran movie distributor, distributor. He had read the book. It had a deeply moving impact on him. And he said, Bill, I think there's a movie in this. His name was Richard Becker, and I said, I said Richard, <laughs> mate... If I thought there was a movie in it, I would have done it by now. No, there's not. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to make a movie on it. And he said, well, look, I, I think if you can capture what's in the book in a film, then I think there's going to be an audience for it. I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to make a film about myself. So he, he set off and uh, uh, commissioned three writers to write three separate treatments. Rob, they were dreadful. No, absolutely <laughs> shockingly dreadful. One had me being chased along the Camino by a bear. Um, you know, these people hadn't walked the Camino. They didn't have a bloody clue. And so I thought, Richard's not going to give up on this. So I thought I, I would then Do take a saw. swing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, so that's, that's how it came about. That's absolutely fantastic. So, I mean, you've been making movies for a long time. This, this is probably a bit out of the box for you, isn't it? And, and you know, was it, was it more of a passion project? Um, no, I've got to say it wasn't a passion project. And that might sound really, yeah. really crazy because here it is, you know, I've made a film about myself based on a book about myself. And you'd think, well, it's got to be a passion project. It actually wasn't. Um, and the reason it wasn't was because I never saw myself in the movie as being myself. Mm. The only way that I could make this film was to treat this character called Bill as someone outside of me who was somewhat interesting because he was so deeply flawed and so messed up in his thinking that he was actually quite funny because he didn't realize that he was just such a yeah. dick and <laughs> and i thought i thought okay well i can make the film this way but it's not me in fact it is me but it's not me so when, so when you were making it and chris hayward plays you 
Mm. Were, were, you, were you seeing a character or were you really seeing yourself? No, I was seeing a character. Yeah. Um, but surprisingly, people from the crew and others would come up at times and they'd say, oh, that moment when Chris did that, I could have sworn it was you. <laughs> Um, and I had yesterday, I met up with uh, at the screening yesterday in, um, <clears throat> uh, in Carlton, the cinema, cinema Nova, I think it's called. I had three blokes in the audience there, three engineers who I met up with in Leon. I spent quite a bit of time with in the latter part of my Camino. And one of them said to me, pulled me aside, and he said, Chris Haywood got your shuffle down to a T. He said it was amazing how he got your shuffle down to a T because I was shuffling because I had this mm. bad knee problem and I'm you know he's such a very very clever actor but the only way I could really protect myself in the making of this film was to see this as another another person mm. Rob you know look I th I've thought about it and I was thinking if I did it the other way then vanity would creep in yeah. you know ego would creep in um all of these sort of um, things that could corrupt the story. Mm. I didn't want that to happen. And we shouldn't. We shouldn't probably dig into the story because that'd be a bit of a spoiler about egos. But <laughs> Chris did a wonderful job, I have to say. Look, looking back on it, and it, and it, I, I know when we when we met at the premiere, you said you finished it the night before. Um, so mm. maybe it, maybe it doesn't even feel <laughs> finished, but. Looking back on it, what's the part that you're most pleased with? What's the part you're most proud with? Or what, what came out best? That's a really good question. I think I'm, I'm, I'm most proud with having finished it, <laughs> um, to be quite frank. Um, look, I'm enormously proud of the film. I, I really am. And it, it is the result. I mean, I take a what's called a possessory credit on the film, a film by Bill Bennett. But... The film is only the film because I was able to work with some extremely skilled and talented people. You know, Chris being one, but the DP, Callum Stewart being another, Rishi Shukla, the editor, um, Wayne, the, Wayne Pashley, the sound designer and so forth. Um, I think probably if I'm proud of anything, It's really the performances that the, the actual pilgrims gave yeah. in the film. I mean, the pilgrims in the film are the same pilgrims that I walked with 10 years earlier. They came back to play themselves 10 years later, and they have given impeccable performances. You would not know that they're untrained actors. Um, and I'm so proud of them. And I'm so deeply, deeply affected by, still by their friendship. You know, it's surprising you say that because, you know, at the outset, I know you, you said there was only four professional actors in the film. So, of course, you sit there during the opening scenes and you think, oh, which ones are the professional actors? It's not obvious yeah. at first. Okay. Not obvious no. at all. No, it's really not. Yeah. It's, um, you know, but, Robert, i got to say, in I, I set out to make a really authentic film on the Camino. That, that's, that was my goal, to, to make a very truthful depiction of the Camino. And I felt that the only way to do that really was to, to film with the actual people that I'd walk with. And it was a risk, you know, for me as a director, because I know how hard it is to get, um, to get those performances out of non-actuals, non-actors. Non, non we, we called them actuals. <laughs> The actuals, the actuals against, and the actors. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, from a directorial point of view, it's it's you know it can so easily go belly up, and the whole film becomes a disaster. Um, you know, so that was a big risk. Yeah, it's interesting. If if I, if I look at the, you know, the different scenes and so on, and those that I felt were most moving. Um, I mean, there was a couple of scenes with professional actors, which which I thought were amazing. Um, but there was also lots and lots of scenes all the way through the movie with the actuals who I, th I think you're saying kind of went off script a bit and it was just so real. Yeah. There, there are three scenes in the film that weren't ever in the screenplay. Mm -hmm. And there were three scenes where Bill sits down and have, has a conversation with three different groups yeah. of pilgrims. And those, um, and I, I gave very little direction uh, to... Um, to the actuals or to Bill, 
because what I wanted to do was I wanted to create the kind of the kind of intimate talks that pilgrims have after a long day of walking, you know, after after sharing something, mm. after sharing experience of say walking up to the top of Osibiro or something like that, yeah. and it um, and I didn't know whether it would work. And in a sense, it didn't matter whether it worked or not because it was never in the script. And if it didn't work, then I could just cut it out. Um, but out of it came some absolute gems. Oh, it, it, it was. And uh, I mean, in, I don't think it was acting by the actuals, but you could see them choking a bit on screen as they were relating oh, yeah. stories and so on. Just, yeah. That was just so real. And, and I think anyone who's walked a Camino, it's just going to resonate really powerful, powerfully with them. I hope so, yeah. Yeah. So, um, given that you had more actuals than actors, was was that a bit of a challenge? Were, were, were there some hilarious moments you could share? Um, <laughs> there's a scene in the film where um, Bill first meets these these pilgrims that he he's having a drink with, and a waitress comes up and says, "Would you like me to take your photo, a group photo?" And um, and Bill and I'm gonna. I have to say myself, I'm absolutely fastidious about composition. <laughs> and whenever somebody takes a photograph, you know, like some, a waiter or somebody comes up and says, "Can I take your photograph?" The first thing I say is, "Not too much headroom," because <laughs> invariably what happens is that they frame with um, you know this huge yeah. space above. Yeah. It always it always happens. Now in reality. Um, in fact, at that very first screening that you're at, there was one person in the, in the audience that was actually at that table when this yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he swears that I sent that actor back. I sent that waiter back seven times, <laughs> seven times to to get the headroom absolutely correct. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Uh, to, 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 now, in the film. Um, we actually filmed. We actually filmed it five times, and then I had uh, people come in and have a look at it. And they go, "No, it, it's unbelievable that somebody would do that five times." And I said, "I actually did it seven times," and then we we cut it down to four times. And I really was holding on to that four times for a long, long time yeah. because I thought, you know, that was it. We finally cut it down to three times, and um, and it works a treat. In it fact, does. it works really but, well. But the reality is that. <laughs> I sent that waiter back seven times until I oh. got the perfect shot. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I was almost going to say, um, no, I won't, because it will be a spoiler alert. But it's interesting how the thing develops. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what are you hoping the audience is going to get from this? I mean, you almost seem to have made it for yourself, but the audience reaction so far has, has been tremendous been amazing i've got to say it's been amazing and well, look what i hope they get is a, a deep understanding of of the camino and what the camino means both in physical terms and also in um in spiritual terms um i thought the way was a wonderful film an extraordinary film and a very important film for the camino but i never got from that film a sense of struggle mm. and what I wanted to show in this film was just so how how damn hard it is, you know. Climbing up that first day to Roncesvalles is brutally hard, and I wanted to show that. I wanted to show what it was like to to walk with pain, mm. you know, because um, pain for me was it turned out to be a very important part of my Camino. The pain humbled me. Humbled me. Without that pain, you know, I might well have not had the growth that I had, you know, so I, I really wanted to show both the beauty and the magic of the Camino, but also the fact that it's hard work, you know, and it really does push you right to the right to the limit. Absolutely, it does. Do, do you think it would appeal to a non-Camino audience? I mean, I think anybody who's remotely connected to the Camino, have walked one or planning one, will flock to see this. You should, if you're watching this, get along to see it. But but what about people who are not even aware of the Camino? There's a very powerful story in it too, isn't it? Look, I think so. Look, in the end, I think I think um, if I can describe the film as a love story, because it's it's a very powerful story about 
a husband and wife who've been married for 41 years, and she's the wife is not happy with the husband because he is such a pedant and stubborn and fixed in his views, and she hopes that in walking the Camino he will change. And at the end, she meets him in the cathedral, at the in the uh, square outside the cathedral, and realizes that he has changed. So, as a film of transformational power, if you like, it works on that level. I think in terms of anyone wanting to see the most extraordinary scenery and culture of Spain, it will appeal to them. Um, I don't know, Rob. I think I think that's a big question. It's a question that the uh, distributor is, you know, is um, pondering as well. Oh, look! I, I think it's going to have massive appeal, and uh, and I think people are going to um, say about this movie what they said about that other movie. In that, oh no, it's making the Camino more crowded. Uh, but yeah. to me, that's a great thing because I, I think it's a journey that um, people should be exposed to and made aware of what it's about and given the opportunity to walk it. It's a tremendous thing well somebody said to me i can't remember who it was they said if everyone in the world walked camino the world would be, be a better place oh wouldn't it ever <laughs> yeah. I, that, that stayed with me i thought yeah it's very very true it, it, it's yeah. funny I, I i might have to beat this out but people ask me you know what sort of people you meet on the camino and i say it's funny you know you don't meet dickheads on the camino <laughs> you don't. You just meet nice people. Well, you know, they might have started off dickheads, but by the time you meet them, they've turned into something else. Yeah, that's right. Um, a little bit like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not spoil the plot. Um, <laughs> so the movie goes on uh, public release 16th of May here, I think, in Australia. 16th of May, yeah. And what's really important is that um, if people are interested in seeing the film... I would ask that they see it in the first three days because what happens is the, this film will live or die on the attendances in the first three days because how, how movies work is that the cinema owners, the exhibitors, will make a decision as to whether or not they'll give the film another run next week or and, and so whatever. So if the, if the figures are up on the first three days, then this film's got a chance of having having legs. So Camino holics who are watching this, get out and see it in the first three days, and bring your Please, friends. Yeah. A Camino film with legs. Now there's a thought, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, <laughs> that's tremendous. So, so many people are asking online, and, and and I didn't let on that we were talking today, but I said I will try and find out. What about uh, release in other countries? What what's what what has to happen for that to to occur? Well, what's happening is that we've engaged a foreign sales agent, a very good one. The film is screening in Cannes in a couple of weeks, uh, in the Cannes, what's called the Cannes Marché. Yeah. Um, we hope that we will secure distribution for North America, the UK, various territories all around the world. And our plan is to have this film in cinema release by um, the second half of this year. Tremendous. That's our plan. So what's yeah. the best way for people to keep up to speed with how that's progressing? Is it on um, the Way My Way movie website or? Um, probably through Facebook or Instagram. Yep. So they follow me and there is yep. also, I think, a Facebook page, um, Bill Bennett's The Way My Way yep. and Instagram as well. That's, that's probably the best, best way. Yeah. Okay. And we'll put links down in the video description. So go look for the links, folks, for all the up-to-date up in information. And so I've, I've got to finish off with one last question. When is your next Camino, Bill? Because this wasn't a one-off, was it? <laughs> no, after that, uh, after that Camino, Rob, I did um, four more Caminos. did two, two Portuguese Caminos, one coastal and one central. Uh, I did the Via di Francesco and mm -hmm. part of the Jacobsweg in Bavaria. But um, I'm not sure whether you're, you're aware, Rob, but I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease oh, no. six years ago. Yeah, and Parkinson, Parkinson's disease affects you in a number of ways, but one of the ways that it does affect you is in your ability to walk. Mm. Uh, so my, it's really put a bit of, bit of a damper on me. Um, but having said that, I have wanted for some time to do what's called, what I call my front door walk, mm. where I do what the... Um, pilgrims said in medieval times, wherever they were in Europe, they would walk out their front door and they would find a way to 
Santiago. I want to do that from where I live in Mudgee in um, central New South Wales. And so what I want to do is I want to walk from Mudgee to the airport, Sydney airport, across the Blue yeah. Mountains, yeah. which is about 300 k. That's going to be tough. From there, I want to fly to uh, England. I want to walk then to my birthplace, which was Wimbledon. Wow. Uh, from Wimbledon, I want to walk from my birthplace then down to the coast, catch a ferry across the English Channel, um, land in France, then walk from France right the way through to Finisterre. Wow. That's going to be about 3,000 kilometres. That is amazing. Now, that's that's what I want to do. And I, I, and I want to do it to bring awareness to Parkinson's mm. because the thing is that I asked myself, why have I got Parkinson's disease when really I've, I've, I've led a very healthy life? Yeah. And the only reason that I can think is that I should put it into service in some way. And I think that if I can use this disease to inspire other people, then, then, then it will make sense of why I have this disease. Yeah. No, that's that is inspirational. That's incredible. Well, I'm uh, going to do it first. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, having walked five caminos with your dodgy knee, you're going to make it. Absolutely, you will. Yeah, I haven't got my knee fixed. I'm, I'm determined not to get a replacement knee. <laughs> Oh, look, I, I know you've got uh, interviews lining up all day, Bill, so uh, we should probably wrap up. But I, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for bringing this movie to us. Um, it, it really is, I think, an outstanding movie about the Camino and its authenticity. And I think it's going to encourage so many more people to undertake the Camino, which, you know, as we've shared, is such a great thing for people to do. So, uh, and remember, everybody, uh, I'll put the... The link's down in the video description for Bill's Facebook page, Instagram page. Get on there for news about further releases. And when you see it being released, get out there with your friends in the first three days. And let's really give this movie a boost because it's got to be seen by lots of people. Rob, look, thank you. You've got no idea how, um, how appreciative I am of your support. Thank you. No, no, I, I will be, when it comes out on May 16th, which is the day after my birthday, I'll be watching it again. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Best of luck with the uh, the remaining premieres, with the festival in Cannes, and uh, with uh, bringing this movie to the rest of the world. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.